Please be seated. The court is now in session. Today, the chamber continues to hear testimony of uh, the witness in Pan, and after its conclusion, the chamber will begin hearing testimony of another uh, witness to TCW 1065. Mr. Chia Huang, please report to the attendance of the parties and other individuals to today's proceedings. Good afternoon, Mr. President. For today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present, except for Mr. Pei Ong, the National Political Lawyer for Civil Parties, who informs the Chamber that he will be busy this morning for personal reasons. Mr. Nuji is present in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived his right to be present in the courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the Good afternoon. The witness who is to conclude his testimony today, that is Mr. Yung Pan, as well as his uh, duty counsel, Mr. Mom Rati, are uh, present in the courtroom. The upcoming uh, witness to TCW 1065 confirms that to his best knowledge, he has no relationship by blood or by law to any of the two accused, that is Nun Chi and Kyo Som Pon, or to any of the civil parties admitted in this case. The witness will take an oath before the Iron Club statue this morning before he testifies. And he has Mr. Chan Sumbo as his duty counsel. President, thank you, Mr. Chi Siu Huang. The Chamber now decides on the request by Nun Chi. The Chamber has received a waiver from Nun Chi dated 1st November 2016, which states that due to his health, there is headache, back pain. He cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requires to waive his uh, right to be uh, present at the 1st November 2016 hearing. Having seen the medical report of Nunji by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC dated 1st November 2016, it notes that uh, today Nun Chi has a lower back pain and feels dizzy when he sits for long, and recommends that the chamber shall grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 81.5 of the ECCC internal rules, the chamber grants uh, Nun Chi his request to follow today's uh, proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs by an audiovisual means. The chamber instructs the AV unit personnel to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that no chair can follow that applies for the whole day. I now hand the floor to the defense counsel for no chair to continue putting further questions to the witness. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning, uh, Your Honors. Good morning, counsel. And Good morning again. Um, good morning, Mr. Witness. Um, there are um, three more subjects that I would like uh, to discuss with you. Um, uh, let me start with uh, following up uh, with something you said yesterday. Um, I'm having in front of me the draft transcripts from your testimony. At um, 1529, you say the following, and let me repeat it um, so that it is clear to you. This is what you said. Um, uh, as introduction, my question was about um, um, Khmer forces assisting uh, Vietnamese military forces. Um, you said, what I know is that amongst Vietnamese troops, there were Khmer soldiers who were trained in Vietnam and who fled from the East Zone. I learned more concretely after the reintegration. Some of those who were first or second star generals spoke about their training in Vietnam, and that's how I learned about it clearly. And a bit further, 
some of them told me that they had left um, Cambodia since end of 1978, and some of them went in late 77, early 78, and they are still military commanders at present. Um, do you remember uh, how long after your reintegration in 1997 uh, you spoke to those uh, first or second uh, star generals about their training in Vietnam? Indeed, uh, I spoke to them regarding this matter and it happened uh, during uh, meal times or sometime during our chit chat. They said that they went for a uh, training in uh, Vietnam in early 78, while some did in mid 78, and that's what they said. And as I uh, stated earlier, I uh, became known of this matter only after the reintegration. Uh, yes, that is uh, clear to me. Um, are you willing um, to disclose uh, the names of those uh, first or second star generals that you spoke to uh, during meals or uh, chit-chatting? Or is that something that you would like to keep uh, privately rather? cannot tell you as uh, who was who during the uh, chit chat and I don't think it's uh, reasonable to uh, say who is who uh, in the court. Um, I understand that. Uh, that's why I was asking uh, this question uh, rather carefully. Um, but uh, without um, explicitly mentioning um, the names of the generals that you spoke to. Um, do you remember concrete details as to um, things such as where they had their trainings, where they had meetings uh, in Vietnam? Um, is that something that you recall talking about? did not uh, speak uh, into details uh, into uh, these matters. What is said uh, was that they went for uh, trainings in uh, Vietnam in 1978, but they did not delve into details, uh, for example, as to the locations. Um, did they uh, go into details uh, as to which Vietnamese forces from which military region uh, they were cooperating with uh, or received their training from. Did they tell you uh, these kind of details? They People who uh, told me uh, went uh, from the East Zone, so uh, they were from a Swabian province. Um, I understand, but um, did they tell you who the Vietnamese military forces were that they received the training from, or, or with whom they were cooperating in 1978? you would like me to clarify uh, as to whom the Vietnamese troops uh, cooperated with. I do not have uh, that uh, knowledge. 
I could not have the knowledge about the Vietnamese plan. Um, I understand. Uh, one, one last question in this respect. Uh, the seventh military region uh, of Vietnamese uh, military forces. Uh, does that ring a bell? Which uh, uh, region? However, Vietnamese uh, troops who attacked into uh, Cambodia were from various uh, divisions. 330, 339, and uh, 7. So I uh, did not know uh, whether they were from the 7th region. I know that there was a division 7, but I do not know whether it belongs to the 7th uh, region. Uh, Vietnamese General Dong Van Kong. Dong Van Kong. Does that ring a bell? Did that, was that name ever mentioned in your conversations? No. Let me ask you, um, let me read to you uh, rather uh, a, an excerpt from a book uh, from someone who um, has been testifying here in the trial of Durik as an expert, um, Nayan Chanda. Uh, his book is E3-2376, page 339, uh, English ERN 00192524, French 00237170, and Khmer uh, 00181682. Um, I will read it slowly uh, for the benefit of the interpreters to you. Um, and my question would be if from the details that I'm, I will be mentioning, uh, something uh, might pop up uh, in your memory. Um, Chanda talks about uh, a very important meeting um, between um, former Khmer CPK East Zone combatants and military uh, forces uh, from uh, Vietnam. Uh, he refers to a meeting which took place on the morning of December uh, 2, 1978. Uh, a meeting uh, in the middle of a rubber plantation east of uh, Snu. And this is what he said, and let me read it um, to you uh, carefully and slowly. The site chosen for unveiling the newest Cambodian Liberation Front, uh, the Kampuchean National United Front for National Salvation, was two miles inside Cambodia. It was a small clearing in the middle of a rubber plantation east of the Cambodian township of Snow. On the morning of December 2, 1978, several thousand Khmers gathered in the bright sunshine to witness the formal launching of the Kampuchean National United Front for National Salvation. Um, he goes on and then a bit further he says, a newly written national anthem was sung as dozens of newly fashioned red and yellow front flags fluttered in a gentle breeze. Um, and then he says, uh, one after another, 14 members of the Front Central Committee were given bouquets of flowers brought from Vietnam as they were introduced to the cheering crowd. Front Chairman Heng Samrin read out the KNUFNS program 
as those assembled shouted in approval with raised fists. After the meeting, Heng Sam Rin walked up to thank the Duk To, who had watched the ceremony from a distance, like a proud mother hen. I did not think you would have done things so perfectly, a beaming Heng Sam Rin told To. Um, there are more details, um, Mr. Witness, but um, this meeting uh, on Cambodian territory in December 78, close to snow, um, thousands of uh, Khmer, the launching of the Central Committee, etc. Is that something that those um, generals told you about? Uh, were they present? Can, can they confirm? <coughs> Uh, what Chanda writes. Regarding the uh, arrangement uh, in the Asia zone uh, to establish the front, uh, I am not aware of it. Then l let me ask you one, one, one other detail. Um, um, and that is something um, that is something that someone uh, referred to who was also present at that meeting, um, and uh, who very unfortunately died uh, two days ago. Uh, so he will never testify anymore. And this is um, what Chanda says about him. Uh, I'm talking about um, the, the secretary of the new uh, Kampuchean People's Revolutionary Party, Pen Silvan. Mr. President, I'll be referring to page 373 of Chanda's book, uh, E3 slash 2376, English ERN 0019255, French, 00237196, Khmer 00191719. Chanda um, talks about uh, the Kampuchean People's Revolutionary Party. He says, the new party renamed the Kampuchean People's Revolutionary Party, KPRP, with its 800 members was, in effect, the revived pro-Vietnamese wing of the Cambodian Communist Party that had almost been destroyed by Pol Pot. The new secretary of the party was Pen So Van, a stern, hollow-cheeked Khmer Isarak exile from Hanoi. The new party restored the Indo-Chinese unity broken by Pol Pot. Unlike Pol Pot, who had denied Vietnamese parentage of the party, Pen Van acknowledged that the KPRP was carrying forward the glorious tradition of the Ho Chi Minh founded Indo-Chinese Communist Party. End of quote. Um, in your conversations with the one or two star generals, um, did they mention The founding of the KPRP, uh, did they mention what Pennsylvan uh, had said, what Pennsylvan's role was? Um, anything that you recall in this respect? No, they did not uh, talk about this issue. That's unfortunate. Um, the tribunal refuses to call the people who were present, so I have to ask um, hearsay questions to you. Um, having said that, let me move on to my next subject. Um, and that is 
uh, Mr. Witness, going back again to um, testimony from Chuk Rin. Um, and um, before I will ask you um, some questions about what he told investigators, let me ask uh, a, an open question to you first. Um, is, uh, do you recall any fighting before 1975 between um, forces from um, the CPK, Khmer Rouge, on the one hand, and Vietnamese or Viet Cong forces on the other hand. In other words, clashes between communist forces of Vietnam and um, Cambodia before 1975. Regarding all the points that you raised, uh, I do not have uh, any knowledge that is in relation to the uh, CPK or the Vietnamese Communist Party or their uh, uh, conflict. I do not have that uh, knowledge. Um, let me see if I can um, maybe refresh your memory through reading what Chukrin told investigators. E3 slash 361, um, English ERN 0076449, um, Khmer 00194463 and 64, and French 00268880. Uh, He's talking about the period before 75. The CPK refused to cooperate because the Vietnamese wanted to govern us and we wanted independence. So that is why we were in conflict with Vietnam, whose mission was to grab uh, the authorities and dominate us. The major dispute between the CPK and Vietnam started from this point on. Internal dispute in Disputes inside the CPK were created by the group which supported Vietnam and the group which opposed Vietnam. And then a bit further, um, when this movement began, the group which supported the Viet Cong was uncomfortable and they began to create their own army. The Viet Cong opened the Ho Chi Minh Trail to supply material for their war against the Americans in Vietnam. This factor pushed a short period of cooperation between the Khmer Rouge and the Viet Cong. In 1973, the fighting against the Viet Cong began, led by Tamok from, against, uh, from amongst the Khmer Rouge. These bad relations created problems within the CPK, and I did not understand anything at all about what happened." End of quote. Um, let me first ask you about uh, military clashes between CPK forces and, um, and the Viet Cong. You said you didn't really know anything about this, but Chuk Rin um, talks about Southwest Zone forces clashing with Vietnamese troops, and, and you uh, yourself were a ranking commander within the Southwest Zone Forces. Were you ever involved in clashes, military clashes, uh, with uh, Vietnamese forces in the Southwest Zone? Regarding uh, the statement by uh, Chukran, uh, Chukran at the time was uh, a military uh, officer in Kampot while I was in Takai province, that is in 1973. Therefore, the uh, fighting between the Vietnamese uh, troops and the uh, Cambodian troops 
did occur in Gompa province and for that uh, reason Chukran became known of it. However, such a fighting between Vietnamese and Cambodian troops did not happen in Dakai province. And if these fightings uh, happened in Kampot, I do not have uh, its uh, full uh, detail. So I can say that uh, Chukran was aware of uh, these issues because he was in Kampot province. Um, I understand. Another, l l let me ask it differently. Um, are, are you in a position to say anything about the frequency of those clashes? before 75 between Vietnamese troops and Cambodian troops, communist troops. I uh, cannot say about the classes or how frequent those classes occur between Vietnamese and Cambodian troops. Since my unit, my unit did not engage directly in uh, the classes, I only knew that there were classes in uh, Kampot uh, province, and in particular in Chuka district. At the time, I was in Dakai province, and I only heard about these uh, classes. Um, another quartz expert, uh, Stephen Morris, speaks in his book about, um, quote unquote, frequent clashes. Um, and there is Vietnamese evidence that suggests that uh, before 75, there were in total a number of uh, 174 uh, military clashes. Uh, frequent, uh, these numbers, is that something that uh, could be accurate? Uh, just the citations, please. Um, the frequent clashes from um, Morris, uh, I will provide shortly. Um, the 174 is not on the case file, um, but it is um, uh, coming from a, a book written by Engelbert and Gosha, uh, which I believe is on the shared materials drive, I'm not sure, but uh, strictly speaking, of course, um, I can't use it. But um, let, me, let me reformulate. B below 200 uh, military clashes, is that possible? Allow me to repeat it again uh, regarding the clashes in 1973 between Vietnamese and Cambodian troops. My unit was not involved. For that reason, I cannot say about uh, the uh, frequency of these clashes. And as you stated, uh, this document came from Vietnam. So they could write uh, anything. They could write about uh, those uh, hundreds of uh, clashes. So it is not uh, within my knowledge since my uh, unit was not involved. Now that with you, I, f I, I fully agree that they could write anything. Um, Mr. Witness, thank you for that um, clarification. Uh, let me move to my last subject and then I'll be finished uh, with asking you questions. Um, and that is about um, the commander of all forces on the battlefront with Vietnam, uh, Ren. Um, we spoke briefly about uh, Ren uh, yesterday. Uh, I believe you were saying that he wasn't someone of many words. Uh, he was a, a son-in-law of uh, Tam Mok, is my understanding as well. Um, there are a few documents on the case file which are uh, either signed by someone called Ren or documents which are uh, copied to someone called Ren. Uh, and I would like you to have a look at these documents. I, I, I understand that you are not familiar with these documents, um, but I would nevertheless like you to have a look at this uh, and uh, see if you can somehow confirm that the Ren is in fact uh, your commander um, when you were sent to Swairi. Mr. President, um, this morning we sent an email um, to the senior legal officer um, um, in 
intending to use four small uh, uh, documents with Ren, Ren's name on it. Thank you, Mr. President. A small point of clarification, since our colleague is telling us that uh, the documents are not known by the witness, maybe then he could tell us what he wants to do with these documents. Uh, does he intend to present a name and a signature for the witness to identify it? I don't really understand what the purpose is of uh, presenting these documents because, uh, as my colleague said, the witness does not know uh, these documents, so can maybe we have a little bit more clarification about what our colleague intends to do with this, this document? Um, in all fairness, I completely agree with this objection um, because um, if documents are not either sent or received by the witness, then obviously uh, the witness cannot say anything intelligently about this document. However, um, the practice in this court is that um, witnesses are being shown S21 documents all the time, um, documents that they uh, certainly have no knowledge of whatsoever, but uh, I'm just continuing uh, this practice, so um, full, fully knowing that he is nor, uh, he's, he's not the sender nor the recipient, I would nevertheless like to show the document uh, to uh, the witness. Okay, look, the from President, you may now proceed, Judge Lavain. Okay. Yes, Counsel Coppe. We can present documents sometimes to try to refresh the memory of a witness, but are you intending on refreshing this witness's memory? What's the purpose? That's the only question that we're asking you. What's the purpose of presenting these documents? A very interesting question, uh, Judge Lavain. Um, I want to ask him whether um, from the document uh, that he will be shown, he can uh, confirm whether this is the Wren that was his uh, commander. Uh, whether that is, I mean, he can look at the context of uh, the telegrams, um, see how Wren is spelled, because that's one of the issues as well. Uh, it's not always clear whether Wren is in fact Wren. Um, there are f few Wrens. It also, especially from the copied documents, um, I think the witness potentially would be in a position to confirm whether Wren typically was um, copied on military documents, just like uh, Damut or uh, Son Sen and others. Um, just to, uh, to inform the parties, of course, on the documents that I'll be showing uh, with your leave, and if you agree, Mr. President, that will be document um, uh, E3 slash uh, 1044. Um, document, I will later say the EONs, document E3 slash 1151. Document E3 slash 1079 and document E3 slash 992 for um, contemporaneous telegrams. President, you can do so. First document, let me um, cite the ERNs uh, first so that uh, the witness can have a look while I'm reading this. English ERN 00875624, Khmer 00020881, French 00324864. It is a um, document from 30 October 1977 signed by Wren, um, and it's called Request for the Removal of Bad Elements, which were divided into three categories. Uh, 
Um, Mr. Witness, let me start with document E3-1044. Um, on th at the bottom of, of that document, you can see REN. Uh, I have highlighted it for you on your document. Uh, so doc for, for duty council E3-1044. Fraternal uh, Revolution, three, 30 October 77, Ren. <coughs> Mr. Witness, is, is, is that the Ren who was your commander? Sorry, this question is certainly too channel. I can see how one can use documents to figure out if this is the person, but you, you can ask him if this is the way he was written, if the contents of the documents show it, but frankly. <laughs> um, fine. Um, Mr. Witness, Ren, you see at the bottom of the page. Um, is that the way Ren, your division commander, was written? Is that the same spelling? Yes, it is the correct spelling of Ryan. In the army, there were two Ryans. One was at Anlong Wang, and another one was uh, based in some load. Uh, the two names, Ryan, uh, had the same spellings. So regarding uh, Ryan in the document, uh, was he from uh, f which uh, area was he from? Again, there were two ranks uh, under one uh, leader or commander, President, Mr. Witness. Please uh, review the document. This document was from the Revolutionary Army of Cambodia from a general staff. The date is 30th October 1977. You stated that there were two ranks. Uh, were the two individuals from the same uh, staff office or they worked in different offices? So upon your review of the document, you may be able to uh, answer the question since you know that there were two ranks. Witness, regarding the content of uh, the document, this document is related to Division 117, uh, which was based in the north, that is on Long Wang. And there is uh, one more division here, 164, which uh, was at the time based uh, at Kampong Sam. And I have seen A01. A01 was based, was based in Anlong Wang as well, to my understanding. And the, I could see that uh, the three documents states about state about uh, the Anlong Wang area. And there is uh, one indication here is about Kampong Saum. So it is my understanding that Ryan here was not from some load. This Ryan was a part of 801, Brigade 801 in Anong Wing. It is my understanding after review, my review of the document. President, uh, what, which document uh, have you reviewed? You are did you review the document E3 slash 1044? Please review one document at a time. Now, please uh, read or examine document E3 slash 1044 before you move to other documents. Thank you for that intervention. And, and 
um, Mr. Witness, the first one, the first document I showed you is signed by Ren, but the other three um, that you also refer to now are only copied to Ren and not um, coming from Ren. So uh, let's move slowly. Uh, let's only concentrate on the first document, E3 slash 1044. Uh, don't look, please, um, at, at the other documents. Is this the Ren that, uh, that became your commander while you were in Swiring? Yeah, Ren. This Ren was the son-in-law of uh, Tamuk, uh, the commander uh, from Swiring. Uh, I will come back to that document, but let's let's finish uh, the other three documents first. Um, have a look at uh, just uh, tickets. Sorry, sorry for interrupting, but can we ask him shortly how he comes to the conclusion? Then we have it on record. Um, I, I, I was coming back to the document. I just want to um, briefly refer to these other documents where he was copied, and then I will come back to Ren uh, because that's the important document that I would like to discuss with him. So, so, and if we could also get some clarification on, on dates, because Ren also moved from southwest to Zvireng. So, while he may be the individual um, in Zvireng, he may not have been in Zvireng at the time. You're all going ahead of, of me. I was um, I was moving now to the three documents, um, Mr. Mr. Witness. With with the help of your duty council, um, please have a look at the other three documents. Uh, the first one is E3 slash 992. That is a re request to report to the general staff. It's dated the 2nd of March, 1978. It's coming from, indeed, Division 117. And um, this document is copied to Brother 89, Son Sen, Brother Nat, uh, to the Office of Documentation, and to Brother Ren. So this document from Division 117, signed by Rom, R-O-M, um, is copied to Brother Ren. Is that the Ren um, who was the division commander? And if yes, how do you know? After I looked at the document, it is my understanding that he was the commander of the division. And uh, this document was sent to, he in this document uh, was referred to as part of uh, gen the staff office. And uh, this, the document was sent to Ryan, uh, and usually uh, military or soldiers uh, had to report to staff office, and this document was sent to Ryan. And the, the other two documents uh, were sent to other office, not uh, staff office. Most of uh, the documents uh, were sent to staff office, and in the document here, it was uh, it said uh, the name Ryan was mentioned, so he may have been part of uh, staff office. Uh, let me ask it um, differently: Was Ren routinely copied uh, on military communications, um, just like Son Sen was? just like uh, Nat was, and just like Brother 81 was, was, uh, do you know, uh, was Ren always copied on military communications? Is that something um, from your position that you could shed light on?
the documents uh, usually were sent to different offices and for confidential documents that were not sent to me regarding the documents about the arrest of a certain individual I usually did not receive any such documents uh, but those documents uh, may have been sent to the upper echelon and Ryan may have received uh, some of those documents I uh, was in a lower rank so I did not I did not receive uh, any such documents. The secretary, the sec secretary was the principal, and uh, some confidential documents were not known by me. Um, but j just to be clear, do you know whether Ren, because of his military position, was routinely copied, uh, just like Son Sen was, just like Nat was, in telegrams that all? telegrams from whichever division uh, to the general staff office were always copied to Ren. As for the uh, those who were in the copy Usually, Rand uh, was responsible for uh, putting the names in the copy part. During the time, the secretary was an important principal. I minded my own business. My superior minded uh, his own business. So there was clear uh, distinction distinction between the work that we performed. Usually we did not uh, know all the information. Uh, th thank you for that clarification. Uh, Mr. Witness, now I will return. Come on, come on, don. President, uh, please hold on. Uh, you may not proceed, Judge Lavagna. Oui. Je me demande si serait quand même pas bon de d'aller I think it would be better to go into greater detail as regard document E3 slash 18992. Does the witness know the signatory of this telegram, ROM? Does he know where Division 117 was positioned? I don't know very well where we are going. It would be perhaps better to have more details on this specific uh, communication. Well, I'd, I'd be happy to do, but the, the content of uh, that telegram is not relevant for this witness because um, uh, it doesn't matter. The, the three documents were collected or assembled to find out whether Ren was routinely copied on matters that he, of course, didn't know anything about. So uh, we can go in that, uh, into that document, but it's Division 117, so I don't think it's relevant. He doesn't know anything about this. My, my questions are all related to document E3-1044, which is a document signed uh, by Ren. Si je si je peux me même if you would allow me, Mr. Kope, document E3-992, uh, deals with an attack on a base of uh, the Vietnamese enemies. Uh, it's, it's, it is from the territory. It's talking of a place called Lok Min. It will be interesting to know what uh, that place is. Uh, we've been talking of conf armed conflict between uh, Cambodia and Vietnam. If you think it is relevant, and then you should uh, provide more details on that. Uh, I'm happy to speak about um, um, armed clashes at National Road 13 or Lok Nin, but I'm not quite sure whether that is in Suireen. Um But um, again, um, my question is about my questions are about E3/1044. Um, Mr. Witness, do you have that document in front of you? Uh, is a document signed by Ren, the 30th of October, 
Um, my question to you is the following. Uh, I understand from your testimony that you were yourself not involved in um, removing bad elements uh, from from the military forces. Um, however, uh, Wren, in, his do in this document, um, requests the removal of bad elements, and he divides these bad elements into three categories. Category one um, in, um, pertains to three persons to be sent to Brother Duik. Category two um, relates to seven persons to be sent to Brother Hui. And category three um, is about 26 persons to be sent to Farm Petty at Presar. And my question to you is, um, were you aware at the time that there were three different categories used um, to describe enemies of Democratic Kampuchea. Based on this document, I have no idea about the removal of some individuals. I was not allowed to know about this issue. I do not know if uh, individuals were removed, but it is, uh, but this was stated in the document. These individuals were removed during the time that they farmed, that those individuals did the farming work at Bresaw, so it may have happened in late 1975 or early 1976, immediately after the liberation during the time, some forces were removed to uh, do the farming. I understand, uh, but were you aware of a categorization um, of um, enemies or bad elements or whatever you would like to call them? Um, Category one, uh, in Son Sen's words, uh, Son Sen's words, the dangerous category. Uh, category two, the ordinary liberal category that must be educated again and again. And category three, the category of those who have merely been incited by the enemy. In other words, um, it's E3 slash 13, uh, uh, English ERN 0094035. President, please repeat the document numbers and your numbers uh, and repeat them slowly for the interpreters. Yes, it's uh, Son Sen addressing his commanders, uh, E3 slash 13, um, English ERN 00940355, Khmer 00052414. And French zero zero three four four nine eight three. Um, so, Mr. Witness, three categories according to Son Sen: the dangerous category, the ordinary liberal category that must be educated again and again, and the category of those who have merely been incited by the enemy. Uh, is that are these three categories something that you were aware of at the time uh, when you were a commander? I have an objection to the question. Uh, the question started off asking about a particular telegram um, sending some uh, individuals um, uh, to S-21 and some to Presar. Now we seem to be talking uh, about a, a totally different individual with a different three categories. The only thing that I can see in common is that they um, have three points. So um, I would object to the question on the basis that we have no evidence um, uh, that, that the telegram is related to this speech. Uh, uh, perhaps it can be reformulated to simply ask about um, uh, the speech itself, but it shouldn't be confusing the two documents. 
Um, I'm not sure if I understand this um, objection. Time and again and again and again, we have discussed this document from uh, where Son Sen speaks. Um, Duik has been confronted with it. Many others have been confronted with. Now I'm um, reading out the document from his commander, also speaking about those three categories. And my question is simple. Does he know uh, of the existence of those three categories that both Ren referred to and Son Sen refers to? Allow me to clarify then. Um, the telegram that Ren sent uh, actually doesn't refer to those categories that the uh, Sun Sen um, related document does. And that's why um, he, he simply talks about um, categories. He doesn't talk about them in the context of Sun Sen's uh, statements. And, and, and how would you know that, um, Mr. Prosecutor, that these are not the exact same three categories? I think the problem we are having, and it's unnecessary to have this discussion, I would say, is um, you are drawing other conclusions than you are. Why don't we just confront them with the documents or ask a general question? Are you aware of any categorization? And then you can confront him with the documents and say, is this the categorization or is this the categorization? And we'll make up our mind if this is the same thing. Mr. Witness, are you aware of the existence of three categories, um, three types of categories um, categorizing three different sorts of enemies. I was a one of the commanders and as for the distinction uh, into three categories, I am not aware of that. I do not know how the upper echelon distinguish uh, these individuals into three categories. I was a commander. I myself uh, never categorized these people into three groups. Uh, Sun Sen uh, may uh, be the one, may have been the one who uh, distinguished into three categories. I was in the lower rank. I do not know about that. Uh, fair enough, uh, uh, Mr. Witness. Um, I'm finished. Um, I'm happy <coughs> to discuss um, with the witness um, document uh, E3992. Um, <coughs> but. Um, uh, I wasn't really planning to, but if, if uh, the bench insists that I, I discuss that with him, I have no problem in doing it. <coughs> Mr. President, as a side point, uh, I said to my colleague that if the chamber had specific questions regarding documents, it may put these questions before I cross-examine or after, but it appears to me that document 922 speaks about the Crutchie, um area. It's 992, it's E3 992. So we're speaking rather about uh, the area around Crutchie here. So I'm not sure that the witness can uh, uh, react to this information. But in any case, uh, maybe I can start with my cross examination and during the break, uh, if the chamber deems that it's important to get back to this document, the chamber can then uh, interrupt my examination. I see that uh, the president is nodding his head, so I can start. Maybe it would be easier, since we spoke about this document, that a few questions be put to the witness regarding this document. Then you'll have the possibility of continuing with your cross-examination. Witness, uh, you have here a document here, which is a telegram referenced E3-992. I do not know if your duty counsel can show you this telegram. It's a telegram on which you were asked questions a little earlier on. So this telegram is signed by someone called Rome. So first of all, do you know someone who has who bears this name, Rome? Uh, 
Rome was uh, in the uh, north uh, zone, that is Division 117, and I am not familiar with the name. Yeah, it Fine. So this Division 117, you tell us that it was uh, stationed in the north zone. Can you tell us with more detail where exactly this division was stationed? Do you know it? Division 117 was uh, within the area of On Long Wang, and for that reason, uh, I do not know its uh, exact, exact uh, base or location since I was in uh, some load. President, maybe there is a misunderstanding. This uh, document uh, dates 2nd March uh, 1978. So the event uh, uh, took place in 1978, and the question to you is whether you know uh, Rome and uh, where that Division 117 was located at that point in time, not at the present time. Because uh, you were in Takao and then you went through the East Zone, so that could not happen to and when you said that you were in some load, maybe that's uh, later on. And this document that is uh, in uh, March 78. Kim Som. I do uh, know Rome, although I was not uh, close to him. And uh, during the Democratic Kamuji regime in 1978, Division 117 was uh, located in the uh, northeast uh, zone where uh, On Long Wang area was. Fine. Uh, did you ever hear about an attack on Lok Nin? And do you know where Lok Nin uh, is located? No. I do not know where Lok Nin uh, was located, and for that reason, I did not know about uh, any attacks there. Fine, thank you uh, for this clarification, witness. I now hand the floor to the Defense Council for Kiev Samkhorn. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, good morning, Mr. Yingpan. My name is Anta Gise, and I am the International Co-Counsel for Mr. Kiev Samkhorn. I believe we already met uh, a little while ago in case 002-1. I'm going to put to you a few complimentary questions and try to obtain more specific information on what you experienced uh, during the armed conflict when you were first near Takeo and then when you were in Sveirieng. So these are complimentary questions in relation to what you already explained to the chamber before. I understood from your testimony that uh, you placed the beginning of the conflict between DK and Vietnam somewhere between 1976 and 1977. So my question is, do you remember the first attack which took place when you were assigned uh, uh, to the area around Takeo? Do you remember the date of that first attack? confirms that in early 77 there were clashes uh, that happened in uh, Dakar province, though I cannot recall the dates. 
the uh, first uh, classes uh, took place along uh, Prachich Vinte or Vinte Canal. And so, to put it simply, uh, it happened uh, just uh, opposite the uh, Phnom Dan or Dan Mountain. And those classes were not of a serious nature. So that is for your information. You said um, yesterday that when you were assigned uh, to Takeo province, you were first stationed around the city of Takeo, and then you were assigned um, closer to the border. So my question is the following. When you faced this first attack, which you remember, were you next to Takeo City, or were you already uh, stationed close to the Vietnamese border? During the clashes with uh, the uh, Vietnamese, I, were, I was not uh, in Takeo town anymore. I, were, I was at the border. However, our unit uh, did not involve in the classes. The classes uh, took place uh, within other uh, units, although they were within the same geographical location. Uh, well, this is a question that I wanted to put to you specifically. So if I understood, you were then in Regiment 12, so do you know how many other regiments were in Takeo and where they were stationed, geographically speaking? I have stated that after I uh, left the special unit, I was uh, reassigned as the deputy commander of uh, Regiment 12. And the location or the headquarters of uh, Regiment 12 at the time was uh, opposite the uh, Chow Dok uh, town office that is in the area called uh, Kiramok Kiru. So it is opposite of the uh, Chow Dok Provincial Office as for other uh, regiments, namely 13 and 14. They were uh, based at toward uh, Phnom Dan, or Dan Mountain, that is at toward uh, the border areas in Kampot province. And we, uh, Regiment 12, was a part of uh, Division uh, 2. And the uh, uh, clashes that uh, happened uh, happened uh, through Regiment 11, because in Division 2 there were Regiments uh, 11, 12, 13, and 14, and Regiment 11 was at Prat uh, Bak Dai, that is a kind of branch of uh, Basa River. So the first uh, clashes that happened uh, early that year uh, happens to uh, Regiment 11, which was uh, located to the left side of where we were located. And since you just told us that it was Re Regiment 11, which was uh, involved in this first attack, you remember, how did you obtain that information? Were there meetings? or was there any kind of communication between the different uh, regiments to see what the situation was like at the battlefront? Let me to uh, provide you with some reasons for the uh, clashes uh, with Vietnam along the border. Initially in uh, Regiment 11, there were no uh, major issues. Uh, 
uh, what happened was the result of a, a border issue. Typically, Vietnam uh, knocked uh, the ground there in order to fish, and so they actually entered the Cambodian territory to, to dig at that uh, ground, and we tried to stop them. We tried to stop them for one or two times, but they did not listen. And the third time, uh, the Vietnamese side uh, planted a border post uh, with a grenade, and when we tried to remove the uh, border post, the grenade exploded and uh, some uh, people uh, died. We tried to uh, negotiate with them and to uh, make a report, but uh, they did not uh, listen, and that was the cause of the armed uh, conflict. That's how they did. They first uh, planted the, the grenade, and that happened inside the Cambodian territory. Then uh, that's the cause of the friction between uh, the two sides, and that uh, led to uh, clashes. However, it was not of a, a major nature; it was sporadic, and that's what hap happened initially at the time. Bah. Thank you, Council. It is now convenient time for a short break. We'll take a break now and resume at 10.30 to continue our proceedings. Court officer, please assist the witness at the waiting room reserved for uh, the witness during the break time and invite him as well as his uh, duty counsel back into the courtroom at 10.30. The court is now in recess.